Last Sunday, March 5th, a very important gathering took place at the Nautical Inn Resort and Convention Center. It was the Havasu Pioneers Reunion. Over 300 people gathered to reminisce about early life in Lake Havasu from the years 1964 to 1973. It was obvious that many hadn't seen each other in years, and the opportunity to get together again was a wonderful opportunity. TV45 was there to talk to some of these very important people about how they felt about Lake Havasu then and now. What is it like to come to a convention like this and see all these people who have been here, pioneers like yourself, Chuck? Well, it's a lot of fun. You don't get to see them every day, and I'm amazed at how many I do see, and I'm glad to see that they all got older than I did in the last 36 years. How about you, Mrs. Langerfeld? I feel the same way. It's, it's great to come out here and see the people that you don't see in the grocery store anymore because there's too many people in Havasu. Too many people, but that's just the price of uh, growth, isn't it? I'm afraid so. How about you, Gladys? What do you think about this, uh, this get-together? Well, it, it's fine. I just talked to a man that came in 1966 and uh, got talking about the donkeys and I said, yeah, I miss them too, the burrows. And they used to go up and down the street and, and uh, I liked it when it was younger. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much. Hey, you're welcome. My pleasure. This is a fun time and we're enjoying it. Yeah. I'm talking to Lyle Matzdorf, one of the Havasu pioneers. Lyle, tell me about this get together today. Well, it's so nice to get all these people together. Our group got together probably the first time maybe four or five months ago to try to get to see if there was interest. And obviously there is, and we went, then I tried to get uh, news releases, which the uh, Havasu Herald gave a news release that there would be old timers coming up. And really then it went from there. We, uh, I'm actually always surprised how many people show up because you never do know. It, it, we have to be a depleting crowd, you know. It's it can't be this number forever, and it's nice to do what we can. About how long have you lived in Lake Abyssin? Well, I moved here with my very young family, my little kids, age four and six. I left Illinois April 10th of 1971 and pulled into town April 13th of 1971. So in, on that three-day trip, I became a resident of Lake Havasu City, and I've been here ever since. So what did you come here originally to do? Just to be part of the community, and I had no idea or plan at the moment exactly what direction I was going, going to uh, go in, but I just thought that I belong here, and I, I, <laughs> and I wanted, to, I'm a desert rat, and I just loved it, and the town has been extremely good. I'm a retired businessman, and the town's been extremely good to me and my family. Robbie, tell me what it's like to be uh, a pioneer in Lake Havasu. Well, I was just a little kid back when uh, we moved here in 1969, and my family moved here from, actually we lived a little while in Parker, and moved here from uh, West Covina, California. And what did you think when you first moved out here in 69? <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot out here. I thought it was pretty neat. We had a good time. I mean, you know, you found things to do. There's only one elementary school, you know, and there wasn't a whole lot, whole lot to do. We spent a lot of time in the lake. So, uh, Jill, tell me, how did you and your family come to Lake Havasu? Uh, my parents came out on a Holly flight, and um, we lived in Illinois, and then they flew back and packed us all in the car, and here we are. <laughs> so did your father work for um, the uh, McCulloch factory? No, he works for IBM. He um, quit IBM. He, they were just getting into computers, and he didn't want to do that. Silly thing. And so he moved out here, um, became a painter, and then he went into banking um, and ended up being branch manager, uh, vice president of the bank. Many cities in this nation don't have an opportunity such as Lake Havasu does to actually meet the people who settled and started a town. It was actually rewarding to speak to some of these people and learn a few things I hadn't known or wouldn't have known if I didn't take the time to ask questions and learn. Until the next Havasu Pioneers Convention, take the time to learn about Lake Havasu by visiting the Museum of History on London Bridge Road. Ken McKinney from TV45.